Okay, so uh, we'll start with, with uh, whoever is in here. Um, first of all, hello, I'm Nitsan. I'm uh, here with uh, the guys from Quali. From Quali. Um, as, uh, as a side note, we're gonna mess uh, uh, with the uh, more basic work, uh, with the more basic uh, features that you get built in uh, from GitHub, uh, instead of um, 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 evaluating what is the end uh, result, we're going to uh, talk about what Quali has uh, achieved using GitHub and what did we find, what features did we find uh, that help us the most, what, did, what, what we found out that um, you know, pushes the sludge in the system uh, far more quickly. And to do that, I'm going to uh, get Tomer here on stage. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about quality and what is our business. And then, as I said, we'll dive into what, uh, uh, how, how GitHub made our lives easier. Um, so, that's fine. So, um, hey everyone. Um, my name is Toner, I'm a DevOps uh, developer at Quali. Um, we'll try to talk about how we use GitHub and why we use GitHub. Uh, feel free to ask questions. Um, let's start. Um, this slide is a bit like fancy <laughs> words, so let's try to like extract what's important. So Quali, what we do is automating DevOps um, and like the most important entity for us in DevOps is Sandbox and specifically Cloud Sandbox so let's say let's I guess most of us are developers IT is maybe QA so um, our day-to-day -day is mostly DevOps and mostly sandboxes and let's take an example so my application is uh, no JS base with uh, no SQL database with uh, some kind of UI. Um, I would like to test it, um, and maybe I would like to develop something for it. So I will need maybe three machines, or one machine, or four machines, or AJ uh, environment, and I need it fast, and I need it maybe on AWS today and tomorrow. Tomorrow my QA need it on uh, VMware. Um, and then we got a ticket from support uh, saying that a specific customer uh, would like to use it on Azure. So all of these specifications for us is a sandbox. Okay, so I will have a few components um, with network uh, between them and I need it fast and I need it now and I need it um, in a specific way every time. So. When I have like a Jenkins build running every night, I need the same environment, not every night, but for every test. Okay, so this is what we do. So as I said, for us, Sandbox is three major components. is like the infrastructure you have, how you orchestrate everything, and then the apps you need. So for example, uh, my apps could be um, a Node.js Node app on VMware or uh, an Nginx something app um, on Azure. This is a sandbox for us. Let's take an example. So this is a sandbox from Cisco's environment. Cisco is one of our customers. Here we have only physical devices. This is the sandbox they use for testing. So they have the compute, the network, and the storage. Just a few words. Mm -hmm. uh, what you're seeing here is uh, a screenshot from the web application, from the quality web application. What you're seeing here is, if, if we want to connect things to what is a sandbox, our application allows you to define the resources in your uh, business. And it allows you to build and define um, uh, little sandboxes that you can use. Okay, you define uh, your resources in your business, 
uh, turn things on, and uh, it allows you to mess with them as a sandbox. Okay. Okay. So here we have only physical resources, but um, we also have like an app uh, pane in the diagram, and I can choose like MySQL Server. I will just drag it into the, the uh, diagram, connect a few lines, and that's it. I have. Uh, uh, MySQL server deployed and this specific MySQL I will drag it, it will open a pop-up I will choose like AWS, Azure, uh, VMware and then it will deploy and connect to the physical devices um, here's an example for WordPress so we have the database, the web server they are connected via an internal network so uh, when we will uh, initiate this sandbox we will have uh, VLAN 100 connected, uh, connecting between the apps, and we have a leg outside on VLAN uh, 101. Okay, so this way, if I'm using, uh, if my app, my application uh, I'm developing is something for WordPress, I can really quickly set up an environment with one leg outside the network, one leg connecting between the uh, database and the web server. So, can before I, yeah, actually, yeah. so uh, basically, when I, I'm throwing all of these components in the, in the application, basically, voice and servers, so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like you can you know, choose what, what, where, where, or do I need to uh, give, give you if it's my important to US credentials or something? Yeah. How do you deploy the so basically, the that uh, in the first uh, install, the administrator will set up everything. Will add up the credentials for the AWS, Azure, whatever, mm -hmm. and then the end user doesn't really need to choose anything. Uh, we can calculate whether we have enough space in, uh, let's say, Azure, deploy there. If you will choose specifically to deploy on vCenter, we can deploy on vCenter. Mm -hmm. So it's really customizable. Uh, and just to put things in context, we talked about uh, end users, okay? Uh, imagine uh, a client using this system, you could have a portion of these users that know their resources well, know their service well, knows their, uh, their application stack well. He could write these components and have people who don't know about how to run these components uh, just use them with drag and drop. Okay? Okay. Okay, so before I will jump in into this on a slide, so the, our application in, is massive. It's actually like 10 applications in a, what we call a suite, um, uh, an organization that would like to install our product. First of all, it's on-premise totally, and you need a lot of machines, a lot of uh, hardware or um, virtual hardware to install it. We have customers with 200 uh, uh, machines running our application, so it's totally enterprise, uh, and really, really m massive. Yeah. It comes with a release manager software? Come again? No. It comes with a release manager management software? Like uh, artifact management, stuff like that? Um, you, we have a few features that can you can call, uh, yeah. Another thing you'll see, okay, uh, is uh, another thing we're going to talk about is how our clients are uh, configuring and building stuff for themselves, custom things uh, for themselves. But my main focus is not about building, it's about distribute. It's after the build. When I distribute... No, I'm, I'm talking about not building as in uh, compiling things. I, I mean in, as in defining new resources that you can drag to off, okay? And then like exporting uh, artifacts like use UFs. Okay, it's it's highly custom, <coughs> customizable, customizable, and uh, uh, most of the work is done uh, in front of the client. Okay? okay, as in if you need uh, an artifact, we will write. Uh, uh, you, you'll have to write something that exposes it. Okay, great. And, and we'll but talk about how that is done. And, and can I promote between the environments my versions when I deploy? Promote. Yeah, if I have like a dev, a dev environment, okay, mm -hmm. I have like version 1.5, okay, 
okay? And in my test environment, I have like one uh, the version one point four or the lab environment. Well, of course, okay? it's and it's I want very common. What what I have in there to deploy it on the test? Yeah, I get that. You you're you're uh, like asking about something uh, uh, more in the lines of I have a dev environment that works, okay? And I have another environment that's uh, in an older version. How how easy w would it be to like uh, relocate yeah, it's them? One click per mode. Yeah, yeah. Or it's uh, it's more than one click, but it's one of the features of Quabi. Okay, it's uh, you have configuration management, right? Yeah, yeah. In the background. That yeah, that does the support this. that does this. Uh, it essentially does this, and Tomer is going to uh, talk about that. Yeah. So this is like what we call the DevOps lifecycle. So we have the coders, we have the build, the CI, the testing, the releasing, the deploying, and so on. So this is what we do. Like in a really quick picture. A few words about our customers. Just pick one you like. Um, most of them, as you can see, are like really big software companies or hardware companies. Um, deployments are really, really heavy. Okay, so let's say the average um, customer will upgrade one thing per year, maybe every two years. So not a lot of changes. We are releasing one every three or four months. Our stack, so we yeah, have Python, we have C Sharp, we have PowerShell, we have Selenium, Karma, uh, I think the common ones. So what do we use? GitHub for so I talked about the fact that we are really like you don't have Java no okay. it's not Jenkins in the background that building no okay it's C sharp so we are really really uh, like an enterprise uh, uh, company and we are deploying like for customers one once a year so why do we need we need GitHub for so um, I think. A year back, a year back, we choose to start a community project that um, uh, will help our customers to add new content without upgrading the system. Because upgrade is really, really tough when you have like 200 machines, um, or even when you have 10 machines in an AJ environment, uh, and you need like special uh, IT uh, guys to help. So. We are using GitHub for a community, and our community uh, is for shells. Okay, so our product is Cloud Shell, and we are using it for shells. Shells are small plugins that allows the user to use new uh, new devices or new cloud providers. Can for I example, ask? Um, uh, what uh, Tomer talked about uh, when he uh, spoke about shells, okay, uh, is we have an initiative, okay. I, I want to uh, say like a few things about how uh, how our uh, business works. How is the app, how does the application take place at uh, the customers? Uh, how does the uh, end client? What what kind of experience the end client will get? What we have is the core application, and each client ha works with. Uh, uh, his own group in developing whatever they need, okay, to specifically to their um, uh, environment. So what we ended up having is uh, like uh, groups working for each and every client, having uh, uh, essentially some uh, reusable code, okay. We had uh, separate groups that were uh, coming up with the same code. What we did is uh, we ex instead of letting these groups work in private, we exported uh, uh, the work on these plugins, okay? As in um, blocks of uh, resource types that you can be used from customer to customer. We exported those into uh, GitHub, okay? So, um, so these customers and the, the groups working on those plugins uh, could have a central location to uh, uh, to update and uh, install uh, um, new 
new facets in their uh, uh, in their uh, environment. Okay, say you have an express server and you want it to take effect in your environment. Okay, you want to drag and drop an express server, for instance. Okay, and another client wants to do the same thing. GitHub gives us the platform to enable that kind of thing, where a customer can just go and look for a specific plugin and use it. And if he discovers a bug or whatever, he could uh, he could use the already existing system of GitHub to notify us. Uh, you want to continue? Yeah. So, uh, if for example we need, we have, let's say Cisco. They're releasing uh, a new switch. Okay, so we will need to develop a new shell supporting this switch. So maybe we, as as Quali, will start the development. Maybe we'll just create the repository, and Cisco guys will develop it. Maybe someone else will develop will develop it. Maybe we'll, we will develop it together. So if you need if you need a, uh, the 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 GitHub uh, repositories allows us to add capabilities to the, uh, to the platform without the need to upgrade anything. You just take a zip, let's say vCenter shell, the output, the output is just a zip file, you drag the, the zip file into the uh, quality web portal and that's it, you have now the capabilities of using vCenter. I just want to add something. Uh, How yeah. can I track who committed what on, on, on the platform and get in from the GitHub, mm -hmm. uh, how can I track it down? Is there a way to, to get that info uh, uh, from your platform? That's one question. The other question is, can you can you build the pi pipeline in your platform? Uh, that's uh, that's essentially what that's essentially what give uh, what GitHub lets us do built in. Okay, every uh, every aspect of what you just described. You want to uh, streamline the pipeline? Yeah, yeah. we'll get to it. You will get to it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we have um, we have the, the two uh, organizations. One is for mainly the communication between us and the customers, okay? And the second called Qualidad is a community um, for our SEs, sales, de delivery guys that will mainly fork uh, repository from the main quality and then custom uh, customize them, um, especially for a specific customer needs. and. Most of the repository under the quality will be private, but the uh, SEs and delivery would like a separate place to have off their code, so we don't want to mess the two of, the, of those together. Like one of the things we found out is maintaining a sort of distributed community around a piece of code. Okay, This is one of the uh, greatest strengths of uh, GitHub. Okay, it's just it starts from the simple things that, like the README uh, file is the first thing you see when you enter a repository. I uh, 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 especially uh, use that feature uh, to like convey how to use that uh, how to use that plugin or how to use that um, uh, piece of code uh, uh, just as a splash page. Uh, you want to talk about that? So, so? I guess we don't have. A lot of time to like uh, say a few words about each of those tools, but the the GitHub uh, ecosystem for us is everything. We have and uh, an entire company knows TFS knows um, only Team City, uh, MTM. So everything is like super um, enterprise stuff. And then we need to tell them, hey, you need to work in GitHub, but. Actually, the change is not that drastic because you have like the code climate, the code coverage, the uh, CI with Travis, you have the um, board with Waffle. Now, everything you see on the on the screen has three features, okay, for open source uh, repositories, repositories. So you could enjoy ev almost everything you see here, which is uh, code reviews, chat. Um, code coverage, builds, uh, gamification, uh, all these kind, uh, all these uh, stuff comes built in out of the box when you uh, uh, just created your repository, a new uh, uh, 
public repository. Uh, and we just enjoyed that quite a lot. Okay, you see here uh, the end line of a pull request uh, where one of the, let me see, yeah, when somebody, somebody uh, checked in, uh, not checked in, somebody uh, posted a pull, uh, pull request and Tra Travis already tried to build the code and try whatever uh, this pull request is even valid. Okay? Yeah, so we have three conditions for a pull request to go in. This is sort of the pipeline. Um, so pull request, then we have a few um, Travis builds, and then we have re re reviewable, that is our humanly uh, eye going through the code and need to uh, prove it. And we get it for free using uh, GitHub. Yeah, the, uh, the emphasis here is on integrations. Everything, uh, I mean, uh, I can come and say that GitHub is popul popular and uh, it's nice and everything, but uh, the, the fact that it's popular gives you so much strength that that's something you'll, you'll see later on. Um, this is uh, actually um, uh, another strength we found, okay, working uh, uh, feature-based, okay? Uh, we used to work uh, with TFS and in these new repositories, uh, GitHub enables us to work by features, okay? So we can have tracking in, on each and every feature, having conversation pages on every feature, having uh, code reviews on specific features as features and not as like groups of, uh, of uh, check-ins, okay? Uh, so we found that uh, Quite useful, um, uh, and this is a little, uh, a little bit of rehashing things. Uh, again, uh, the, the 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 Git flow of making a pull request and then uh, having a column about it, having a review, all these workflows. Okay, we ended up having a lot of influence about the qual uh, yeah about uh, about the quality of our code. So if you're afraid, yeah. About the deployment, do you support Docker containers and stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's quality. Yeah. Ah, okay. Um. Okay. So about the continuous integration and the fact that most of us knew only TFS and Microsoft Enterprise stuff, and now we're using it. So it's not that difficult. So we extracted a few thing, a few component in your, into Git and understand that. It's really easy. You don't need something fancy to like see the big picture. So we have like developers that using now only GitHub. We have developers using um, only TFS, but we have also developers using both. Um, the next step will be Team City or Travis uh, for testing, and then uh, continuous deployment or continuous uh, other other steps of uh, continuous integration. And the whole process is monitored by. Sysense dashboard that gives us um, the full picture for mostly management uh, people, but also for us developers to see how many tests we ran uh, in the nightly, how many of them uh, fail, passed, we, what are the, the, the code areas that maybe didn't work that well in this nightly. And uh, so. again, the emphasis here is about uh, integration and openness, okay? Uh, Tommy talked, about, talked a, little, uh, a little bit about Sysense, which is the uh, reporting tool, uh, or more of the BI tool we were using, but the fact that uh, GitHub was open enough with its APIs gave us the, uh, the ability to, to make our own dashboards, okay? What about provisioning the environments? What do you mean, provisioning? If I want to provision like a test lab and I want it the specific sizes. Yeah, I, I think we should, yeah. talk about we should talk about the capabilities yeah. of quality as a, as a product uh, on it on it on itself uh, later on. Okay. Uh, at the end, we'll, we'll uh, you could uh, ask whatever questions you want. Yeah. So here is an example. We have the Vcenter shell, which is one of the products, um, one of the shells to support uh, Vcenter. We have the Team City builds that. Uh, We'll pack the, the shell and test it. And then we have the code from GitHub 
success. We have the code from PFS with success, and then we have a step with smoke test that will join the two of them and test it uh, as one product, and then a push to uh, to the continuous deployment uh, section of the build. Again, we have a Team CD uh, configuration that takes artifacts from from both builds from GitHub and builds from our own TFS, and it testing? lives, and everybody's happy. Yeah, again. What about unit testing? About the so we have unit tests in here for uh, for the uh, for the code inside um, GitHub with Travis. So th this build w would wouldn't be initiated if those uh, tests. Uh, would be ran and success successfully uh, ran, and this compile wouldn't be uh, green if the unit test will will run. So there are a few steps before those. Okay, and this is like really like like a piece of the the complete C highway. So about reporting, so we use a lot of the GitHub API, and if you don't know it, I really recommend it. Because um, it's really, really easy. Even with a five-line Python code, you can parse the, uh, the JSON and have cool stuff like we, we have. So here's an example of our uh, QA dashboard. So we have bugs. The long number are from TFS. The short numbers will be from uh, GitHub. And then we have on a single uh, SciSense widget, we have the complete view of the version. We don't need like few components for uh, reporting and analyzing what's the status. Okay. So here is a few examples of what we will store and upload for uh, in GitHub. So we have the official stuff, of course, but we also have a lot of dev utilities and QA utilities and questions and discussions and future projects. Um, that we would like to start and future projects our customers would like us to start or they would like to start. Um, Docker is an example, so um, one of the customers opened uh, like a Docker shell repository and we saw it and we said, oh, that's, that's a nice opportunity. opportunity, let's do that. So everything started from uh, GitHub with Docker. A few words about stuff we really like and we found really useful. Uh, within GitHub uh, UI. So this network chart um, helps not only the developers well, but also the, the, the more management people to understand whether a feature is done. Maybe we have few uh, features that relies one on another. So it's really easy to see that one developer check uh, commit uh, his code and the other um, the other developer took it and now the, the second feature is really like almost done so we use it a lot. Again, uh, one more thing, the, the feature doesn't have to be done for me to know its progress because uh, um, because of the git flow uh, a certain programmer can uh, upload a few changes without marking it's done, uh, without uh, deciding it's done and uh, Again, this helps us uh, get a better grasp of things. So we really like the, the issue template. We use it a lot. It makes our life really easier when we when we say it for uh, we're saying everything should be the same. Issues should have a, a, an aligned um, template. And then we can add like checkboxes, and each uh, each QA should say. Um, it's really important or that, that did I use a virtual environment for example so we have a specific template uh, we really like the, the we can see the flows so in TFS it's like crap you can see like the summary of the first one and the, the last one and then you don't know what's going on but in GitHub it's really easy we really like the referring sites because we can see a bit of analytics about uh, the uh, repository, especially when we we, uh, we mention them maybe in press release. We really like the tagging, and those tagging will be shown also in the Waffle I/O. 
-hmm. So it's really easy to uh, filter by them or just just uh, search. two words about Waffle I/O is uh, it's uh, in the, in the it enables you to uh, create a uh, Kanban board. Does any of you know Trello or yeah? yeah. yeah. Uh, so it creates this UI, this type of UI, from normal uh, GitHub issues. So you could have a Trello-like experience with uh, um, with the issues from GitHub. And how can I track in quality the screen the label and label? Uh, oh yeah. How can I track my, my labels or my sprints in quality? First of all, uh, out of the box you have an option to track something. Okay, you could track uh, either an issue or a repository. So if there's a bug you're interested in uh, seeing being resolved, okay? You want to be notified when, that when the next version without the bug uh, arrives, you can enlist yourself to that bug, okay, and see whenever we uh, or somebody uh, from the community. Well, like if I work with a sprint, okay, and my labeling is the sprint itself, okay. This is my label, and I have the version, okay, in the GitHub, okay, okay, the commit and stuff, change set, okay. Now, and I want to like my building stuff in the Travis Yard, you know, okay. the box, and I want I want to add that I want to be able to make sure when it get to the artifact. It will be labelized in what in what screen. You understand? Uh don't say show be rich. Don't tell me. Yes, this print that it makes a lot of change. Okay? So you say she's just printing the maca. Okay, the gin session. But it's a betrayal. How can you care for the how can you care for the sale? Ah, uh the link, but okay. If I the uh, labeling can uh, the labels here specifically talk about issues, but if you you want to have labeling for Travis um, um, for Travis artifacts, yeah, uh, they, I would go more into uh, like integrating stuff like Ubot, okay, like having a bot uh, tell you whenever uh, a certain build is ready. Okay. You're, you're asking to be notified when something happened in Travis as a result of like a commit in GitHub, right? I, I would pick one of those uh, solutions. Okay. Uh, like last words before we go into Q&A? Uh, okay, so let's start Q&A. <laughs> אנחנו משתמשים גם וגם. Yeah, sure. Ask again. In Hebrew, I'll translate. How do you connect your not issue tracking, but the assignment tracking? Oh, for us, everything is is an issue. Yeah. Okay. A feature is an issue. A question is an issue. Everything is an issue. So, so how do you how do you make a sprint like uh, with the waffle? You make it from yeah, you have people attached to a certain issue that will appear in the waffle, okay. uh, and you can know what ha what is assigned to you by uh, by adding up all of these cards uh, okay. that are like not done yet, okay, or weren't archived yet. Okay. Okay. So if uh, and uh, if I want to know. Uh, in a certain uh, commit, or uh, how do you connect the issues? So we do it with GitHub, so it's not a separate... Uh, yeah. uh, on top of that, by the way, uh, whenever you commit something in GitHub, you can use like the hash code of the commit, okay? Uh, of the, the I mean the issue, yeah, to, to, uh, to uh, plug it against it. But since we work, we're working with pull requests, it's way easier to do it as part of a group uh, pull request. Just have the whole pull request be attached to it. Okay. Uh, uh, and yeah, this is the waffle. So give us an example for like an enhancement. Here's an example for a feature for versions 7.1. Here's an example for bug. 
So we have everything in here. And you can drag, you can choose your columns. It's, it's really customizable. Um, again, any more questions? Okay. Uh, so again, uh, we were very happy to be uh, hosted here. Um, thanks for the guys from GitHub. Thank you. Uh, can we we'll wrap it up? Anything else you want to have? Thank you very much, everyone, for coming. If I said it, thank you. I think this is your size. Size. <laughs> <laughs> T-shirts. Oh, thanks. Cool. And we have much more, uh, many more stickers. Uh, <laughs> the stickers are here to be taken and used. Uh,